not be the same. Few people laughed. Few people cried. Most people were silent. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Vishnu is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty and to impress him takes on multi-armed form and says we are now prepared to destroy Adolf Hitler joined the National Socialist German Workers' Party, also known as the Nazi Party. Gradually, he gained influence within the party by promoting propaganda and introducing new ideologies. Hitler's charismatic speaking abilities and his ability to connect with disillusioned Germans helped him rise within the party's ranks. He became the leader of the Nazi Party in 1921. However, his regime would face a catastrophic event in the years that followed. In the 1920s, Jules Robert Oppenheimer was in his late teens and a formative period of his life. In 1925, Oppenheimer graduated from Harvard University, a summa cum laude, where he initially pursued a degree in chemistry. However, his passion for physics led him to shift his focus and delve deeper into the field. Oppenheimer traveled extensively during the 1920s. Broadening his intellectual horizons, he spent several months in Europe. He traveled to England to continue his education at the University of Cambridge, the Cavendish Laboratory, where he conducted research in experimental physics under the guidance of prominent physicist J.G. Thomson. However, Oppenheimer was not content with his education there. He believed he was not learning anything It was not being challenged at all. He was being uncomfortable due to the amount of stress of his grad work at Cambridge Lab. He got into depression, to the point of even despise his professor, Patrick Blackett, whom he nearly killed by leaving an apple covered in a toxic chemicals on Blackett's desk. Oppenheimer's character was recognized for his introverted and reserved nature, his quick and sharp intellect, his eccentricity, and his remarkable talents. However, at times he experienced a sense of deep loneliness, leading him to consider himself as one of the most isolated individuals in the world. Because of those unsatisfactory experiences, he decided to move from Cavendish Laboratory in England to University of Koningen in Germany. In 1926, Oppenheimer traveled to Koningen, which was renowned for its physics department and was a prominent center for scientific research at the time. He went there to work with prominent physicists, including Max Born and James Frank, and to further his studies in theoretical physics. At the age of 23, in 1927, he finally received his PhD. In autumn of 1928, Oppenheimer taught at Institute at the University of Leiden in Netherlands. During his visit, Oppenheimer impressed others by delivering lectures in Dutch, despite having limited experience with the language. Oppenheimer was somewhat a shy individual, especially when it came to teaching. Despite his brilliance and expertise in physics, Oppenheimer was known to be reserved and often appeared nervous or hesitant while giving lectures. He was known to speak softly and sometimes struggle with public speaking. Because of this, only one student remains at his class. However, he eventually found a technique of giving lectures that had become popular, respected by students and colleagues, which his students began calling him as OP. After receiving his PhD at Europe and having experience to teach, Oppenheimer returned to US, 
At the University of California, Berkeley, he accepted a post as an associate professor of physics. He also accepted to teach at Caltech. Oppenheimer was diagnosed with a relatively moderate type of tuberculosis prior to starting his career at Berkeley. As part of his treatment, he spent several weeks residing at a ranch in New Mexico, initially with his brother Frank. After residing at the ranch, he eventually leased it and later acquired ownership of it. There were two things Oppenheimer loved, physics and desert. Nine oh four, New York City, a bustling metropolis, the construction of New York City subway, it was undergoing significant developments to shape its future. On April 22, 1904, Jules Robert Oppenheimer was born in New York City to a wealthy German-Jewish family. In 1888, his father migrated to New York from Germany, seeking better opportunities. Migrating New York was likely driven by economic and social opportunities available in the United States, where he eventually met his wife, Ella Friedman. They were both Jewish descent and with family background moved into the United States. His father became a successful textile importer, which provided the family with a comfortable lifestyle. As a child, Oppenheimer demonstrated exceptional intelligence and a keen interest in science. He attended the Ethical Culture Society School in New York City. He was exposed to various intellectual and cultural influences from an early age. New York City, with its diverse immigrant population, exposed Oppenheimer to a variety of cultures and perspectives. He had fondness for stones or minerals. He had a specific collection and kept on classifying them. He possesses a deep passion for poetry, which his family anticipates him will lead him to pursue a career as a poet. Additionally, during his childhood, he develops an interest in building blocks, nurturing aspirations of becoming an architect at one point. His mother Ella sent him to several piano lessons, where he realized his son was truly a gifted child. His intelligence was recognized by his family and teachers. He managed to complete both the third and fourth grades within a single year. Furthermore, he also advanced to the eighth grade by skipping half of the academic year. His brother was born on August 14, 1912, and then during the same year, their family relocated to a more affluent neighborhood in Manhattan. This area was renowned for its grand mansions and elegant townhouses. His mother Ella had a talent for painting and was recognized for extensive collection of artworks by renowned artists such as Picasso, Villard, and Van Gogh. Undoubtedly, the family was affluent. While the world was recovering from the destruction, Oppenheimer graduated valedictorian in his high school. However, his neglection of eating, he suffered from colitis. He experienced a one-year delay in enrolling at Harvard. In order to aid his recovery, his father sent him to the southwestern state of New Mexico, where he developed a passion for horseback riding. As the world plunged into a Great Depression, the stock markets crashed, many people lost their jobs, equals no food on their table. Meanwhile, the rapid rise of Nazi party in Germany Parliamentary elections, the Nazis became a significant force, securing a substantial number of seats in the Reichstag. With their growing influence, the Nazis capitalized on political maneuvering and exploited the weakness of the Weimar Republic, the Germany's democratic government. Oppenheimer had limited interest in politics and did not read newspapers, him being not updated with the world current events, such as the Wall Street crash in 1929 until a friend informed him six months later. Oppenheimer was primarily focused on his work in theoretical physics and research, which consumed much of his time and attention. His passion lay in the study of atomic and quantum physics rather than political or current affairs. After his mother's passing in 1931, a closer bond developed between him and his father. In 1933, Hitler became a chancellor, appointed by President Paul von Hindenburg. The Nazi party quickly consolidated power and began implementing a series of radical policies. Hitler and his party utilized propaganda, intimidation, and political maneuvering to suppress opposition and transform Germany into a totalitarian state. 
During this period, Oppenheimer developed a growing interest and concerns about the unfolding events about the Nazi regime in Europe. In 1934, Robert Oppenheimer began actively assisting his colleagues escaping the Nazi Germany. Oppenheimer, along with other prominent scientists and organizations, recognized the value of rescuing talented individuals from Nazi Germany. They formed networks and organizations dedicated to assisting the Jewish scientists and intellectuals in finding refuge, securing positions abroad. However, in 1937, Oppenheimer's father passed away. The loss of his father was a significant personal event in Oppenheimer's life. At the year also, Oppenheimer began attending communist discussion at University of Berkeley, but during this time as a professor in physics, he participated in formal gatherings and study groups where socialist and communist ideas were debated and explored. These discussions included the topics such as the nature of capitalism, class struggle, and the potential for socialist revolution. However, these ideological associations would later become a source of controversy and a scandal for Oppenheimer. In 1938, under the guise of addressing the rights of German minority, Hitler demanded the annexation of predominantly German areas of Czechoslovakia into Germany. This claim was supported by the Munich Agreement, an agreement reached between Germany, Italy, France, and the United Kingdom, which essentially appeased Hitler by allowing him to annex these regions, known as Sudetenland. The aggressive occupation of Czechoslovakia further intensified fears of German aggression and marked a significant turning point in the lead up to World War II. After that, the next meal of German Nazis was Poland. On September 1, 1939, German forces backed by Luftwaffe launched a full-scale invasion of Poland. The swift and brutal invasion of Poland marked a significant turning point in the global conflict. It prompted Britain and France to declare war on Germany. Henry A. Wallace. As the war progressed, it became evident that scientific advancement in nuclear physics had the potential to revolutionize warfare. The American scientific community became aware of the possibility that Germany might also be pursuing atomic research. The apprehension intensified when it was discovered that German scientists such as Werner Heisenberg were indeed conducting research in nuclear fission. The possibility that Germany might be also achieving a functioning atomic bomb became a significant concern for the Allies, particularly the United States. However, in 1939, Einstein wrote a letter to President Roosevelt about the atomic fission. Research conducted by Otto Hahn, Lies Meitner, and Fritz Strassmann. However, Einstein did sign a letter dated August 2, 1939 addressed to President Roosevelt, warning him about the potential of Nazi Germany developing atomic weapons through the process of nuclear fission. The letter co-author physicist Pierre Zillard emphasized the importance of the United States initiating its own research on atomic energy. Oppenheimer ended his three-year relationship with Tatluck. He had a close relationship with Gene Tatluck, an American psychiatrist and a fellow student at University of California, Berkeley. Their relationship developed during their time in Berkeley in 1936. Oppenheimer and Tatluck shared common interests in literature, left-wing politics, and intellectual pursuits. Tatluck's influence on Oppenheimer was significant, particularly in shaping his political and philosophical views. She introduced him to leftist ideas and encouraged his engagement in political activism. Several months after his breakup with Tatluck in 1939, Oppenheimer met Catherine Puning Harrison, who was known as Kitty. She is a radical student and a former member of the Communist Party. They developed a close relationship and their connection deepened over time. However, Kitty was still married with Richard Harrison, a physician and medical researcher. Her marriage with Harrison was her second. While her relationship with Oppenheimer was blossoming, Kitty divorced her second husband, Harrison, on November 1, 1940, the same day she married Oppenheimer. His generals were cold-bloodedly picking out the first victim, Norway. In April 1940, Nazi launched a surprise attack on both Norway and Denmark as part of its broader military strategy. The goal of this invasion was to secure strategic locations, resources, and gain control of the Baltic Sea and North Atlantic. A lightning war strategy, German forces 
launch a coordinated assault in low countries. The invasion began on May 10, 1940, with German forces launching a full-scale assault in Belgium, the Netherlands, and Luxembourg simultaneously. The primary objective was to bypass the heavily fortified Maginot Line in France by quickly advancing to the low countries and encircling the Allied forces. Because of the invasion of lowlands, German forces launched a devastating offensive against Allied forces in France. Quickly overpowering their defenses, the German advance trapped British, French, and Belgian troops in the coastal town of Dunkirk with their backs to the English Channel. The situation became critical with the risk of large-scale capture or annihilation of the Allied forces. In response to the growing international tensions, at the time, World War II was escalating in Europe and there was increasing concerns about United States preparedness for potential conflicts. On June 27, 1940, Roosevelt issued an executive order to create the MDRC. Its purpose was to coordinate scientific research and development efforts related to national defense. The committee consisted of prominent scientists, engineers, and military officials who collaborated to address various technological challenges. Oppenheimer's first child with Kitty was born. In 1941, several significant events unfolded in a conflict between Britain and Nazis, as well in the clashes between the Luftwaffe and the Royal Air Force, RAF. Throughout 1941, the Luftwaffe and RAF engaged in intense aerial warfare as part of a larger conflict between Britain and Germany. In 1941, Nazi Germany launched a massive invasion of the Soviet Union known as Operation Barbarossa. This invasion aimed to conquer Soviet territory, crash the Soviet military, and subjugate the Soviet population. As winter approached, the German forces faced logistical challenges and fierce Soviet resistance, which eventually halted their momentum. Did Japan poke the sleeping giant? One year after forming an alliance with the Axis powers, Japan enters World War II by launching an attack on American colony in the Pacific. Japan had pursued an aggressive policy of territorial expansion in the years leading up to World War II. Starting with its invasion of in Manchuria in 1931 and subsequent actions in China, Japan sought to establish dominance in East Asia and secure vital resources. The attack on Pearl Harbor, faced with the world's economic situation and the perceived need to secure vital resources, Japan decided to launch a preemptive strike against the United States Pacific Fleet at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. On December 7, 1941, Japan forces launched a surprise attack inflicting significant damage on a U.S. naval base, prompting the United States to officially enter the war. President Roosevelt and American citizens were furious with the loss of over 2,400 American lives, including military personnel and civilians, the attack resulted in more than 1,100 wounded. Creation of Manhattan Project Recognizing the urgency of the situation, President Roosevelt authorized the creation of Manhattan Project on August 1942. The project was named after the Manhattan Engineering District. In 1942, General Leslie Groves was appointed by U.S. Army to oversee the construction of facilities necessary for the development of the atomic bomb. His official title was military director of the Manhattan Engineering District, which later became known as the Manhattan Project. Groves was chosen for his position due to his successful management of the construction of the Pentagon Building. Under Groves' leadership, the Manhattan Project undertook the immense task of coordinating and managing the scientific research, engineering, and construction efforts required to develop the atomic bomb. Groves recognized Oppenheimer's exceptional intellect, scientific expertise, and leadership qualities, which made him the ideal candidate for the position. During the Manhattan Project, concerns were raised about Oppenheimer's associations and past involvement with left-wing political organizations, including his previous ties with the Communist Party in the 1930s. In 1942, FBI conducted an investigation to Oppenheimer's background and political beliefs as part of the security clearance process. Groves and Oppenheimer were tasked with locating an ideal site with their highly classified project. Oppenheimer then proposed and advocated for a flat mesa near Santa Fe, New Mexico. 
which was previously the site of Los Alamos Ranch School. Oppenheimer's familiarity with the area and his belief that the location would provide a sense of space and openness. The Los Alamos Laboratory was built on the grounds of the former boys' school, utilizing some of its existing buildings. Oppenheimer assembled a team of exceptional physicists, often referred to as luminaries, who were among the top scientists of the time. As previously mentioned, the remote location, surrounded by cliffs and mesas, provided a level of natural protection and enhanced security. The mission of the British Royal Navy, keep the French fleet from Nazi hands. The Battle of North Africa, also known as the North African Campaign, was a series of military engagements fought between the Allied forces and Axis powers. But it's coming to end. The construction of preparation for the Los Alamos Laboratory began in the late 1942 and finally established at the beginning of 1943. Oppenheimer being scientific research director, he had the immense task to keep the project being a top secret. The development of the atomic bomb was considered vital to the war effort during World War II. Revealing information about the project could have potentially jeopardized national security. All individuals involved in the Manhattan Project, including scientists, engineers, military personnel, and politicians, were strictly prohibited from sharing any information about the development of the atomic bomb. So the Los Alamos Laboratory was heavily secured with numerous checkpoints and strict security measures in place. The population of Los Alamos grew significantly during the development of the atomic bomb. A scientist, engineers, and support staff were recruited to work at the laboratory. The exact number of people who work at the Los Alamos varied throughout the project, but at its peak, the population reached around 6,000 to 8,000 individuals. After almost a year of a bloodshed battle, brutal street-to-street -street fighting, the encircled German forces were gradually weakened by lack of supplies, harsh winter conditions, and Soviet assaults. Despite being married to Kitty, Oppenheimer resumed his affair with Totluck, who would visit her apartment. But her depression worsened, and tragically, Totluck eventually took her own life after their last few meetings. However, second child of Oppenheimer and Kitty was born on December 7, 1944. The Triumph of Battle of Normandy Allied invasion of German-occupied Western Europe and eventually led to the liberation of France and defeat the Nazi Germany. In 1944, as part of the Manhattan Project, the United States undertook the construction of two different types of bombs, the Little Boy and the Fat Man. These bombs utilize different designs and mechanisms for achieving nuclear fission and releasing a devastating amount of energy. The Little Boy was a gun-type uranium-235 bomb it consisted of two subcritical masses of uranium-235, which were brought together rapidly by conventional explosives to form a supercritical mass. This initiated a nuclear chain reaction, resulting in an explosion. Fat Man was more complex explosion-type plutonium bomb. It used a spherical shell of plutonium-239, surrounded by conventional explosives, arranged a symmetrical pattern. When the explosive was detonated, they compressed the plutonium core, causing it to reach a supercritical state and initiate a nuclear explosion. Despite having intelligent scientists and researchers, Germany did not have the capacity to build an atomic bomb. First, the lack of resources and disruption of scientific efforts. Allied advances by 1945, the tide of the war had turned against Nazi Germany. The Allies, including the United States, the United Kingdom, and Soviet Union, had made significant advances on multiple fronts, pushing German forces back and liberating occupied territories. In April 1945, Soviet forces launched a massive offensive in Berlin, the capital of Nazi Germany, faced with overwhelming Soviet advances and encirclement. The news of Germany's surrender spread rapidly. The end of the war in Europe brought relief, joy, and sense of triumph to the Allied nations as it marked the defeat of Nazi Germany. 
and the liberation of millions from Nazi oppression. However, despite the new triumph, President Franklin D. Roosevelt of the United States actually passed away on April 12, 1945, which was about a month before Germany surrendered in World War II. His Vice President Harry S. Truman assumed the presidency upon Roosevelt's death and played a crucial role in the final stages of the war. On the fateful day of the test, scientists and military personnel guarded anxiously at observation points several miles away at 5.29 a.m. the gadget. It was a fat man that was used. It was detonated, producing an unprecedented explosion equivalent to approximately 20 kilotons of TNT. The blast created a blinding flash of light, followed by a massive fireball and a mushroom cloud that rose 40,000 feet into the air. Oppenheimer's reaction to witnessing the Trinity test was complex. He said, it worked, but as the weeks go by, he became anxious and cannot believe what a destructive weapon they built, and the world will never be the same. However, Japan remains a sole Axis member that's still raging the war. On July 26, 1945, the United States did issue warnings and calls for Japan to surrender, before dropping the atomic bombs. The Possum Declaration issued on July 26, 1945 outlined the terms for Japan's unconditional surrender. It called for Japan to accept these terms or face prompt and order destruction. However, Japanese government initially rejected Possum Declaration and showed no signs of surrendering. The first atomic bomb struck an enemy target. This is zero point on Hiroshima. The exact spot above the city at which the bomb burst over enemy territory at the junction of the Matoyusu and Oto rivers. The atomic bomb was intentionally exploded well above its target in order to dissipate its radioactive material. The devastation you see here was caused by the explosion of the bomb above this zero point. Only the strongest buildings are left standing. The primary object was to bring a swift end to World War II in the Pacific. The U.S. believed that dropping the atomic bombs could force the Japan to surrender and avoid the need for protracted and potentially even bloodier invasion of Japan's mainland. And lastly, to prevent the Soviet involvement in Japan. As the war in Europe had ended in May 1945, the Soviet Union was preparing to join the war against Japan. The U.S. was concerned about the expansion of Soviet influence in East Asia and the potential for the Soviets to occupy parts of Japan by swiftly ending the war with the atomic bombs. However, when the war ended, Oppenheimer left the Los Alamos laboratory and continued to teach at Caltech. He became sensational cover of Life and Time magazines. Oppenheimer's position allowed him to influence policies, decisions, and advocate for civilian control of atomic energy. Oppenheimer's political beliefs and associations came under scrutiny during the early years of the Cold War. His earlier left-wing political affiliations and associations with communist sympathizers drew the attention of government, officials, organizations. In 1954, Oppenheimer's security clearance was revoked by the Atomic Energy Commission. Following the loss of his security clearance, Oppenheimer shifted his focus to academia. He returned to teaching physics at the University of California, Berkeley. He purchased a property in the U.S. Virgin Islands and spent time there with his family. Being a chain smoker throughout his life, Oppenheimer's last years were marked by declining health. In 1965, he was diagnosed with throat cancer, leading to his death on February 18, 1967, at the age of 62.
have the most concentrated release of explosive energy in the history of mankind.